Welcome to Philippine Canadian Inquirer's Daily News Roundup brought to you by CanadianInquirer.net, your only Filipino-Canadian daily news portal. I'm Rowan Akio and here are stories making headlines today. U.S. diplomat says U.S. played key role in Marawi success. The top U.S. diplomat in the Philippines said Tuesday the U.S. has no credible reports of human rights violations by the Philippine Armed Forces or police during their five-month campaign to oust Islamist militants from the southern city of Marawi. Quote, there were no credible reports or allegations that the armed forces of the Philippines engaged in any abuse or any activity that violated human rights of people of Marawi, Uncode Ambassador Sung Wai Kim said in an interview with U.S. reporters, adding it's quite positive that the Philippines military behaved in a responsible manner in a very difficult situation. Kim said the U.S. military provided surveillance aircraft and other equipment to help monitor and assess the militants' positions during the Marawi campaign. He said this assistance was critical to a successful outcome. Kim said the extent of the militants' infiltration of Marawi was a surprise to both the U.S. and the Philippine governments. They overran the city in May, setting off alarms in Southeast Asia and the West because of their affiliation with the Islamic State group. Mauta considered a dead group, says AFP chief. After losing the battle in Marawi City against the government troops, the Daesh inspired Mauta terrorists can now be considered a dead group. Armed Forces of the Philippines Chief of Staff General Eduardo Anu said, The AFP chief believes that the possibility of the Mauta group reviving itself as a fighting force will take a very long time. Quote, I think it will be a very long time. They will attempt to recover, but they don't have such capability like what they did in Marawi, unquote, Anu said. Although the military is confident that it has defeated the Mauta group, Anu said that it should remain vigilant of lone wolf attacks. Quote, what we should be watchful for is a lone wolf attack. One or two persons will show off and will detonate IEDs. That's what we are guarding and hopefully it will never happen. But in the scale of what they did, they don't have capability, unquote, he said. Meanwhile, military expert Clive Williams of the Australian Defense Force Academy said, quote, AFP operations will have driven ISIS-affiliated militant groups closer together and facilitated recruitment of new members, unquote. He added that surviving Maute fighters who might have returned to their Lenao del Sur localities might regroup and launch attacks in the future. Duterte and Trump agreed to a bilateral meet at ASEAN Summit. A bilateral meeting on the 31st Association of Southeast Asian Summit in November between President Rodrigo Duterte and U.S. President Donald Trump is set to happen as both have agreed in principle to hold one. This was according to the ASEAN 2017 National Organizing Council Director General for Operations, Marshano Painter Jr. However, the exact schedule and the concerns to be discussed have not yet been finalized. On Wednesday, Painter said that an agreement in principle is yet to be reached and the details of the meeting were still being discussed. Painter added that Duterte and Trump's bilateral talk will possibly happen in the sidelines of the ASEAN US meeting. Quote, it is only a question of time and timing, unquote, he said. That wraps it for news here on PZI Daily News Roundup. Thank you for joining us. For more news stories, visit our website at www.canadianenquire.net.